Hello and welcome back to the Pre-Shift Podcast presented by 7 Shifts. My name is DJ and I'll be your host, bringing you everything you need to know about running better restaurants. On this episode, we're joined by Newton Wang of 7 Leaves Cafe. My name is Newton Wang. I am the strategic lead in the marketing and IT discipline, or if you want to know my official title is Director of Marketing and IT. Newton's career spans two and a half decades and features stints at Carl's Jr., Arby's, Pyology, and more. Now, he's the strategic lead in marketing and IT for Seven Leaves, a regional coffee and tea concept with 42 locations in California, Texas, and Georgia. Newton and I had a great conversation about meeting customers where they are, how customers and team members reflect one another, and building a culture of care at Seven Leaves. But first, Newton tells us a bit about how the industry has changed during his career. There's definitely been a, a deeper segmentation relative to what I had first entered into the market as. You know, we had traditionally sit down and then uh, quick serve, and then fast casual kind of birthed in the middle. And then um, everything else in between that has kind of proliferated between, you know, non-traditional like ghost kitchen concepts to, you know, on demand. And so um, the biggest change for me is how the customer expects to receive the experience, Uh, not only food, but just the way that they interact, um, the brands. And moreover, um, I've been kind of riding shotgun uh, because I, I am in the marketing and IT space and just trying to meet them where they are at. And so that's been the, the natural evolution. Um, and, you know, fortunately, where I'm at, I do um, want to position myself to be, you know, in front of that growing change uh, versus being reactive. For Seven Leaves, being in front of that growing change means a foray into mobile, which currently makes up 45% of their business. The way that we stay in front of those particular arenas is to continue to have engaging mobile app experiences uh, coupled with uh, an elevated in-store experience. And so um, my customers, whether you know it or not, DJ, are very... um, galvanized and extremely enabled and so uh when when they come into our store they they expect multiple different things from for lack of a better word uh ambiance um but they expect a frictionless type of experience and so one of the things we're sort of flirting with right now is um use of lockers right and in in a way that's meaningful and so mobile being 45 percent of our business upwards of 65% in some of our stores, we really want to uh, make that holistic experience better uh, for our customers. So this is one of those kind of initiatives that we are very um, happy to kind of see materialize. But last but definitely not least, it is really just trying to find the right team member base uh, that elevates our brand and, and meets the needs of our customers. And so, Our customers and our team members are a reflection of one another. And as you might know, respective to this particular industry, um, labor force is a little nuanced right now. All of my cohorts are having challenges sourcing, for lack of a better word. And, you know, we have not yet felt that uh, here at Seven Leaves. However, uh, we are very dogged about finding the right type of personnel to ensure that our customers feel a sense of themselves when they come in. Um, that's been you know, one of our strategies uh, behind the scenes. As Seven Leaves leadership has listened to what their customers want, they've also given their ear to what their employees want. And heard from that is what Seven Leaves calls their culture of care. From an employee standpoint, it's listening to their needs. Um, you know, we, we employ a lot of quote unquote Gen Zers and um, you know, despite societal stigmas, you know this working force here uh, demands one thing, and that's purely knowledge. Um, I think, respectively, what we bring to the table as a brand is that we know that as an employer of choice, many of them are being first-time jobbers, are um, a transfer of knowledge, soft skills that are going to help propel them to the next echelon in their life. And so the culture of care is really listening to not only what they need intellectually, but also just 
providing them an environment where they can kind of thrive. And, uh, you know, respective to that culture of care and and elevating the team member experience, the natural translation is the customer experience in by which, you know, customers recognize that not only how we treat our team members um, being uh, so critical in their overall perception of our brand, but what we do outside uh, our four walls embodies that, right? And, and many of our cause marketing efforts are really built upon serving the communities that we serve. And when team members and customers feel connected uh, by those very actions and activities, it really validates um, all of the smaller, minute things that we're doing. And so, um, you know, we we have a, a very unique statement that, you know, we're the intersection where life happens. <laughs> and um, respectively, um, it, it resonates as, as far as what our care is concerned. And while every team member and customer interacts with that culture differently, one in particular found fulfillment and growth in their work and their life through participation in Seven Leaves culture. There's a, a story birthed out of my Anaheim, California store. Uh, that we have a store manager, young lady, McKenna Chambers, and um, 19 years old, mind you. Um, and she is our, responsible for a $2 million business. That's, that's the AUV of her store. And she challenged our marketing department and said like, hey, I want to do something with um, a local organization called Grandma's House of Hope. And she pitched it to me. And we kind of just hammered out some details and ultimately birthed a very, very simple food drive, right? But the overwhelming response when we kind of put that rallying cry to her customer base was that we were able to donate four carloads worth of canned goods that would go to underserved senior citizens. And so the care, the listening uh, skill that I employed for McKenna was that I, I basically elevated her thought. And the net effect was our customers heard what we wanted to do, and then they brought everything to life. Um, just rewind, literally a couple of weeks ago, we, we just punctuated something called our season of goodness, which was a three-month-long campaign that Seven Leaves did nationwide across all of our stores. And um, each month, starting in October, was highlighted by an effort by which we asked our customer base to help us serve our community. So October was a book drive. Those books that got donated went right back into libraries, the penitentiary system, because inmates need literary enrichment. In November, we did a canned food drive where we visited homeless shelters, soup kitchens, and even the Humane Society because our four-legged friends need a little bit of help. And then in December, we had a toy drive where we visited local hospitals, partnered with Toys for Tots because we just felt that there shouldn't be any kid in our communities that don't get a little something. So there's that's kind of like the, the net effect across all, but that all birthed from one 19-year-old out of our stores. The key to success in building this culture for Seven Leaves has been enabling employees to be champions of good causes and important work. The initial response was not skepticism, but a little bit of just let's wait and see, right? Because when you kind of pitch this very broad plan to a cashier or even a store manager, there's this ideology of like, well, how does that work? Uh, but when we interlaced the ability for our store managers to be the the champions of, hey, you've got all these canned goods that you've collected, and we're going to ask you to help deliver it to the soup kitchens or homeless shelters, then it became very real to them, right? That they're like, I, I got the canned foods, and now I'm going to a place that's maybe two miles away from me that these people need it, and it just hit home the minute that they did that. And they realized the impact that they had in their communities because um, this company that they work for, Seven Leaves, allows them to do that. And so when they visited those, again, homeless shelters, when they visited those kids in the hospital, when they visited uh, and and just provided a toy to that like four-year-old, it became very real to them. 
For a company of Seven Leaves size, building culture does come with a few challenges, namely how to make it genuine and not corporate feeling. And how they've done that is by recognizing that culture isn't just built once. It's an ever-evolving process that requires leadership to show up every day and live their values. Many companies, uh, and I included being part of those past regimes, have always tried to create culture, right? And and I and to use um, Donald Burns' statement, culture is an inward-facing component, brand is an exterior-facing component. Um, that some of the challenges that we experience because a large proportion of our workforce are uh, skew younger um, is the ability to share this ideology sincerely and with authenticity and integrity, right? It, we, we didn't want it to come across as feeling too quote unquote corporate. We didn't want to um, cascade information devoid of tonality or, or intention. And so we were very methodical about how do we want to share um, this uh, philosophy in a way that resonates with them. And so that really kind of had a lot to do with just being where they receive their information. Um, there was a, a ground and pound where we were visiting stores, doing a store tour, connecting with the staff in that way. So there's human touch there. Um, it was um, making ourselves fully accessible um, by way of outside of the store and, and sharing that these are your access points to us. Um, and then, um, like all things uh, with that generation, uh, they're very good at calling things out that don't feel right. And so we, when we, uh, quote unquote, broadcasted a lot of our activities around the culture of care, we wanted to do so that incorporated them versus you know, we were from a position of ascension. And so when they see folks within their community of team members, there's a certain validation and credibility that's associated with that. And so we were very methodical about that. And, and um, there really wasn't a whole lot of pushback. However, there has been challenges associated with consistently maintaining that with the revolving door of team members that our brand as well as many other brands have, right? Um, you know, average turnover for our segment is anywhere from six months to nine months if you're lucky. And so when when you kind of have that to contend with, there is a discipline and let alone a, a certain sort of conditioning that our leadership team has to have that, you know, um, you know, we invested all that time and then the person separates and then now you have a new person and you got to continue with that momentum and so that's been um not easy to be brutally honest not easy at all seven leaves investment in building a culture of care has had ripple effects throughout the entire company beyond resonating with their customers the culture they continue to build every day both attracts and retains employees that enable seven leaves continued success it definitely has been a retention strategy for us uh, when we kind of hack and slash it um, it, but it's also an acquisition strategy for us. But, you know, I think moreover, um, you know, I, I would never say that we're impervious to, um, I guess, labor, quote unquote, shortages. One of the things that we recognize through our own happiness index, which is what we call it, um, is that, you know, if you don't keep your team members engaged, um, they will go elsewhere. And that that's just the nature of the animal. And, you know, respectively speaking, a lot of younger team members don't really have any aspirations of staying within the industries. Like you said, they're transitory and that's a revolving door. So our belief here is that how do you make the restaurant industry a viable option to someone who, who this is their first touch point? And um, I remember back in my days in operations and I was a store manager and I, I saw my DM come in and I was just extremely impressed and say, I want to be that one day. And then my DO came in and like, I want to be that one day. And I became a restaurant person for life. You don't necessarily see that love affair for a lot of folks simply because they have other ambitions prior to even coming into us. And so one of our company um, goals, as we call it, and we utilize the teachings of Gina Wickman's traction, is to really elevate the store manager persona in by which our team members can say like, hey, this is a viable thing for me, right? You know, we're, we're, we're contending against um, restaurant counterculture, uh, and, and we've done this 
to ourselves, to be brutally honest, uh, but to really make this viable uh, for many uh, younger folks to who then become the next wave of our restaurateurs is to ensure that, yeah, we, we can do things a little differently now. And, you know, it's just a matter of showing you, right? We, 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 we haven't really done that as well as we'd like to. So this year we are actually very um, surgical <laughs> on how we create this narrative. And it's uh, a matter of putting uh, some store manager biographies together and, and again, showing them and, and architecting the story sincerely, of course, and by which they see like, oh, wow, this is something that I can absolutely do. Uh, we want to kind of layer in additional store manager fringe benefits and then really put the microphone square up on recognition of like, hey, you know, when you're a top performer, you are definitely not only going to get rewarded, but praised and revered. Um, and so when it comes to even our bonus structure, you know, it, it could be something as, as simple as a direct deposit into your account, or it can be our CEO driving around, meeting with the managers face to face with all of the team members around and seeing like, hey, here's a check. Thank you for everything that you do. And I just wanted to let you know. So those are those kind of um, things that were percolating um, so that, you know, people can begin to resonate with this industry a little bit more intimately. Now back to that happiness index. It can be difficult enough to stay on top of one team's morale, let alone 42 across the country. The happiness index is how Seven Leaves is able to do a pulse check with their team members and make positive changes for the employee experience. Newton explains how they figured that out. That's a, a self-probing, uh, good, the bad, and the ugly type of survey that we send out to every single layer of our organization. Um, I, fortunately, don't have the unenviable task of like holding and cultivating all that data. Um, but, you know, like, like I mentioned before, uh, because our audience um, is very vocal, oh, they, they let us know everything about what they like and what they didn't like. And so, you know, when you come across leadership teams, the, 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 the exercise of just capturing the data is one thing, but really where you want to backload a lot of that discovery is like, so what do you do with that data? Right. And so, you know, we've, we've gotten baseline numbers of how happy are our team members. Right. And then um, cultivated themes by which we really feel like, hey, we can act upon these little things and kind of, you know, take care of some of the low hanging fruit. But then there are these broader themes that definitely require some attention. And, and you know, we're not trying to do any sort of smoke and mirrors. We want to acknowledge and just say, hey, guys, we heard what you said. This is what you guys said. And these are the things that we're going to do it. And we're going to hold ourselves accountable as a leadership team. These are when we're going to make these things happen. And so, again, like like I, I kind of aired on before, there's a, a whole look and see pattern because they're, they they want they want to know. All right, let's see if this actually happens. And you know, we've been very uh, open and honest about things we can do and things we can't do. Um, and you know, we we typically want to you know over deliver and under promise. But respective to that, um, we we really want to ensure that you know, our team members feel quote unquote happy at what it is they're doing because at the end of the day, they translate that over to our customer. And so, you know, there's, if there's anything that we really pay close attention to is that we do it on an annual basis and we might kind of button that up to maybe a biannual just so we can get a better pulse on things. Um, but, you know, just going through the motions and mining all of that rich data, it's a, it's a thing, that's for sure. <laughs> One such change they made was a wage upgrade for store managers. The teams at Seven Leaves will also be implementing lunch and learns where team members can interact with subject matter experts within the company. Think things like real estate, finance, and leadership beyond just working in the cafes. One of the things that we're going to be birthing um, uh, in greater consistency and intention is our uh, what you call lunch and learns. This is not a new idea. But exception, but basically allowing our teams to interact with subject matter es experts uh, within the company and just sharing with them a little bit of like, so how did you get into real estate? How did you get into HR? Um, and just kind of doing that in a way that allows a pathway, you know, whether you want to stay with us or not, that's cool. But at least we can transfer 
best practices so that you can move on your merry way and, and just know how to go about being a successful person in society. And on the pay side, Seven Leaves is using their wealth of customer feedback to create incentives for manager bonuses. Our bonus structure is, is fully locked and loaded to reward top performers. And um, more so now than ever before, we just recently revitalized our customer feedback and, and kind of transformatively moved over to what we would call a net promoter score strategy, uh, which is not, not new in this industry, but new for us here at Seven Leaves. And therefore, really um, making the customer voice uh, even more important than it was before relative to just in-store metrics and and sales. Um, But, you know, uh, I I think, you know, our managers feel that the bonus structure is not only fair, but uh, supplemental in a lot of regards to just their base wage. And so um, there was very much a lot of care put into creation of the bonus and um you know just really kind of it is what it is relative to if if they blow it out of the park or you're gonna you're gonna get rewarded and if you were just shy you know exactly how to cut get over that so that you can be part of that audience and to collect all that feedback Seven Leaves uses a software tool called Ask Nicely to pull feedback from review sites and ordering platforms to make rewarding those top performers a bit easier we utilize a, a platform engine called Ask Nicely, uh, which essentially pulls in all of that data from a digital ordering and uh, in-store experience and, and um, from various uh, digital platforms. And so it was a, a no-brainer for us because before we were just mining that information manually. With all of that in place, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Seven Leaves is on an upward trajectory. And they're also walking the talk and continuing to build upon their culture of care in 2023. We just recently launched our hot drink menu, uh, which has been a paradigm shift for us here at Seven Leaves. Um, But definitely be on the lookout for some very awesome collaborations. One of the ones that we've got percolating under the hood is um, with an online gaming community uh, that really fosters a safe space for women gamers. Um, And... uh, I would honestly say more than half of our customer base are that gaming community. And so this is a a collaboration made in the stars in by which um, we're going to be partnering up with them during Women's Empowerment Month in March to really um, do some big things. And so be on the lookout for that. Thank you for joining us for the pre-shipped podcast presented by Seven Shifts. Be sure to follow us on social media for new episodes and bonus content. And as always, my inbox is open, dj at sevenshifts.com. Let me know what you think of the show, who you want to hear, or just say hello. We'll see you next time.